Well, my name is Brian Carson, and I'm here to talk to you the, the truth about exercise, about how, when, and most importantly, why you should consider exercise. So I feel really privileged to be here at Zeminar, a life-changing day for Generation Z. And I want to refer back to Anna Geary's talk this morning and back to Johnny's talk just now. So Anna talked about we have choices and decisions to make on every, every single day. And Johnny talked about making habits. And I'm not here to preach at you guys or to tell you what to do. But what I want to do is inform those choices and inform those habits that you make from a physical activity and exercise perspective so that you can better your lives. Okay, a little bit about you guys as Generation Z. If you look at the top left corner, these are your physical activity habits. Okay, and it's a little bit of bad news to start off with. Okay, in the green quadrant in the top left hand corner, only about one in four of you guys, young people in Ireland, are as physically active or do as much exercise as they should to benefit their health. Okay, so why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because one in four young people in Ireland today are obese. All right, what's the issue with that? Okay, well, there's some short-term effects. One of those ill effects is, is a negative effect on your bone health. Another is you develop breathing difficulties. But one of the most important, and one you'll hear a lot of reference to this week is, you can develop psychological and social issues around that. So if you're overweight or obese, unfortunately that leads you or predisposes you to encounter social issues. What are the long-term effects, okay? And the long-term effects are more what I'm gonna focus on today because that's what my expertise is. Okay, I want you to look at the person beside you. All right, look them square in the eye. And unfortunately, this is a powerful message. One of the two of you will die of heart disease. All right. So, what you've got to say is, is it you or me? All right, you're gonna stare that person down, is it you or me? Okay, now I want you to look at the person either side of you, okay? One of the three of you, unfortunately, will die from cancer. Okay? But the good news is, the good news is that your exercise and physical activity can prevent both of those things happening. Okay? So you can change your future. Okay. The question I often ask people when I do these talks is what do these two people have in common? All right, and the best answer I've got to date is neither of them looks too fussy about what they eat. Okay, the diff what they do have in common is they share 99.9% .9 of the same DNA sequence. So essentially they are the same people. The difference is our friend on the left is an Amazonian Indian needs to hunt and gather for his food. The guy on the right is probably very sedentary and has access to high calorie dense nutrients. Okay, so there's an imbalance between the energy they expend and the energy they take in. Okay, and what I want to show you here is if you want to live, one, for a long time, but two, for the amount of time you live if you want to have quality years, the more physical activity you do, the longer you live and the more quality that there will be in those years you are half as likely to die at any point in your life if you're physically active to the right amount. So physical activity is actually medicine. If we put our hands up, who takes a vitamin supplement, some sort of powder or potion to keep themselves well, takes something when the doctor tells them to? Okay, we all do it because we're told to do it. But actually physical activity is a more powerful medicine than any of those things that we do. If you don't want to be sick, become physically active. It enhances your immune system, okay? It decreases the number of infections you get. The only time that that's not entirely true, and Johnny might be able to testify to this, is when you're involved in very, very, very vigorous training, okay? If someone's overtraining, maybe close to competition. So often you'll hear of Olympians or Gaelic footballers or rugby players at the World Cup, right at the most important moment, they get a flu. But other than that, if you're active to the appropriate level, you'll be less sick less often. If you don't want cancer, it's been proven to prevent every cancer 
except rectal cancer, every other cancer. So the most common cancers that you guys will have encountered, unfortunately, in your families or you might encounter down the line are breast cancer and prostate cancer. Exercise is a powerful tool to prevent those diseases. If you don't fancy getting diabetes, again, the more physical activity you do, the more you're prevented from getting type 2 diabetes. If you want to be heart healthy, okay, and there's two points to this slide. Your cardiovascular fitness, okay, so your fitness level is the biggest predictor of your health, okay, and particularly your cardiovascular health, so your heart health. And what the second thing I want to show you here is that there's three weight categories here, okay, from left to right. So on the left hand side we have our normal weight individuals, we have our slightly overweight individuals in the middle, and then our obese individuals on the right. But the good news is that if you can get fit, despite being overweight or obese, you are protected from developing cardiovascular disease. So your fitness is more important than your weight. So your weight is not the issue. Weight is what we concern ourselves with far too much. What's far more important is how physically active and fit we are. That's a much better predictor. Okay, so a couple of things I get asked a lot by young people about exercise. How should we exercise? Exercise, engage in any movement that you enjoy and that you feel is sustainable, that you're going to continue. As Johnny said, make a habit. Okay, develop a habit, engage in something you enjoy, and that can be any type of bodily movement from dance to rugby to Gaelic football to running in a marathon. How often should we train? Well, this is a complicated one. You guys are meant to be active 60 minutes every day of the week. Okay, but if you're training very hard, it takes a little bit longer to recover, so you can extend out that period. Because what we want, we want the top graph here. When we train, we get better and better and better. The body's very clever. Has anybody ever trained and felt very sore the next day? That's the body saying, screw you, you didn't do that to me before. I wasn't ready for that. The body reacts and it adapts and it says, the next time you try and do that, I'll be ready for it. Okay? So after that first session, it might take you two days to feel okay. Then you want to train again. Okay? Another two days, train again. What you don't want to do is train too early or will happen down on that lower spiral. In fact, you'll actually get worse if you overtrain. So the ideal rest period is somewhere between 24 to 48 hours. And the fitter you are, the more regularly you can train. So you build up to it. Okay, how hard should we train? That's the other thing I get asked all the time. Okay, we did a, a research study back in 2010. And has anybody heard of HIIT training, high intensity training? What we found was, when we exercise people high intensity versus low intensity. They had the same amount of energy expenditure, but after the high intensity exercise, their metabolism was more boosted than it was after low intensity. And the other major point or important fact was you did it in half the time. So you could expend the same energy, get an extra metabolic effect, and do it in half the time. So you're getting more bang for your buck. So the recommendation would be for high intensity. But just to take it back a point, the effect of the intensity on the recovery is important. If you're doing high intensity exercise, you require further rest, okay? Therefore, you cannot exercise as quickly again the next day. Another question I get asked is around cardiovascular aerobic training versus weight training, okay? Resistance training. Which is the best? Well, both, again, engage in the activity that you enjoy that's sustainable. Both aerobic exercise and weight training are very, very beneficial for your health. But what we found is that the best exercise is on the right-hand side there is a combination of both. So maybe do one day on and one day off. We also see that that has the best effect in terms of reducing our body fat and increasing our muscle mass, which is protective for our health. And the last question I get asked is, what's the best time to work out during the day? Well, I'll throw the question back at you. What time do you want to be at your best at the day? If you want to be at your best in the day in the morning, then you should exercise in the morning. If you want that to be in the evening, you should exercise in the evening. Because our body's very clever, it has a rhythm, and it likes to adapt to that rhythm, and it will become good at doing something at the same time every day. That's why we get jet lag. 
okay? Because we're used to sleeping at the same time every day. When we travel to a new time zone, we fall out of that. Okay, and like I said, I just want to inform your choice going forward. So you have the knowledge to make an informed decision, you have the knowledge to make an informed habit, and you have the opportunity to shape your own future. And I hope this helps you shape that future. And I want to get that message across that exercise is medicine. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.